Hey guys, welcome back to the last week of house parties for the month of February. My name is KJ and I have the incredible honor of being a part of the student ministry team here at the chapel. And before we get started, I just want to give a huge shout out to the St. Francis house party, the leaders over there, Mike and Jamie. Listen, you guys are the real deal. Thank you for serving students, loving them so well, and leading with intentionality and purpose. I'm so grateful for you and the investment you're making into this generation. We are better because of you. Thank you guys. This week, I want to take a minute to share about a verse that has been on my mind. I've been reading through the Bible in a year uh, using a, one of the, uh, the Bible plans in the uh, Version Bible app. And I would encourage you, even though we're like 50 something days into the year so far, it doesn't matter. You don't have to start the Bible on day one. You could start the Bible through in a year right now. It doesn't matter. Just the whole point of it is to start it. So if you want to challenge yourself and read the Bible in a whole year's worth of time, I would encourage you to just find a Bible reading plan on the Version app. That's one of those like read the Bible through in a year plans. Or if you're like, which one are you doing? Because I would like to do that because I found a pretty easy one. I'll direct you right to it. I would love to help you with that. This is like my fourth time going through the Bible and I learn something different every time. And like even right now, tonight, we were going through uh, right now, the Bible plan has me going through uh, the book of Romans. I'm wrapping that up. And Romans is one of the most incredible books in the whole Bible. And if you've never read it, I would encourage you to check it out. Uh, it's in the New Testament. It's right after the Gospels. And it's a straight to the point, genuine letter from the Apostle Paul to the people of Rome. And in it, he really addresses like a whole slew of issues. And one thing he really spends a lot of time on is sin. And that's where I want to camp out today. The verse I want to share with you is Romans 6, verse 16. And I'm reading it from the New Living Translation. And it says this, Don't you realize that you become a, the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. So that's it. So we find ourselves doing things we wish we didn't, and we don't do the things we ought to do. Can you relate to that? Do you ever find yourself doing the things you know are wrong and not do the things that you know are right? Of course you do. Of course you can relate to that. You're human. We've all been there. And that's what Paul's talking about. Like, even when you know you want to do the right thing more than anything, and you still don't, Paul writes about that. He says that there's a war waging within himself. The things he wants to do, he doesn't. And the things he doesn't want to do, he does those things instead. One of the things I love most about Paul is that he shoots straight. He's very clear. He's not very confusing. He gets right to the point. And the bottom line is this, you guys. Paul says we are slaves to whatever we choose to obey. No matter what, we're slaves. That poor habit, that addiction, that behavior you give into, you are its slave. And the reality is we can either obey God or obey sin. We can be a slave to sin or a slave to God. Earlier in verse 12, he says, do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. But there's good news for us today. If you're a believer in Jesus, you're under his grace Grace is a gift that we just do not deserve. It's unmerited. It's unwarranted. We did nothing for it. God lavishes, just outpours his grace on us time and time and time again. So that means that that habit or that addiction that you can't seem to shake, hey, Christ died for that. He set you free from it once and for all. The good news of the gospel is that you are more than a conqueror, the Bible says, because of Jesus' work on the cross. So don't let sin have the final say. In fact, it doesn't get the final say. King Jesus has the final say in your life. But I get it. I know what it's like when you just sin or you just like the weight and the conviction is falling on you and you feel there's condemnation. You're like, I'm never going to beat this. This sin has me beaten down. It's got me pressed down. I'm never going to beat this thing. No, 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 no. That's not true. That's not what the Bible teaches us. When Jesus defeated sin, death, and the grave, when he died on the cross, he freed us from the chains of sin. 
So even though you feel bound by the sin in your life, it has nothing on you. And that should be good news to you today. That should feel fresh, like uplifting to you. Ask Jesus to forgive you for that sin. Talk it over with him. Hey, I mean this. Whatever it is in your life, call it out. Name it. Don't beat around the bush with Jesus. Because guess what? He already knows what it is anyway. Say something like this. Okay? This is just an example. You make this apply to you. This is just an example. Jesus, I'm sorry for my selfishness. Or Jesus, I'm sorry for my jealousy. Or my poor attitude. Or my pride. Or the evil that lives in me. I'm a broken person in need of your great mercy and your forgiveness. Would you please forgive me? Forgive me maybe for the lust in my heart. Forgive me for this or forgive me for that. But name it. Don't just say, hey God, would you forgive me for that thing that I did? No, no, no. Call it out. Name it. And then tell the Lord that you want to repent from it. To repent means you turn away. You go in the opposite direction. And you choose to be a slave to obedience to God and turn from your obedience to sin. And when you sin again, you do it again. You ask for forgiveness and you repent and you tell God your heart's desire is to obey Him and Him alone and not your sinful nature. When we obey God, Paul says that it leads to righteous living. Isn't that something we all want? That's what verse uh, 16 said. It said, uh, this is what leads to righteous living. And I know that you want that. Sure, sin may seem enticing to all of us, but at the end of the day, our heart's true desire is to be in union with God, to be aligned with Him, His plans over our own, His will over our own. When we obey God, that's the first step to truly righteous living. Listen, you guys, my prayer for you this week is that you would repent of the sin in your life, whatever it is, that you would name it, that you would bring it before the Lord, and that you would ask for forgiveness, that you would repent of that sin, that you would seek the abundant mercy and never failing forgiveness of Christ and take a step in the right direction towards righteous living. I know this house party is a little different because it's not about what Alvin was talking about, but it was just something I felt like I wanted to share with you <clears throat> to wrap up this whole month. So don't forget, next week, we've got, I can't even believe, February is basically over. We have first Wednesday on Wednesday, March 1st. It's going to be an incredible time all together right here, 7 p.m. And then, hey, if you're a high school student, man, what are you waiting for? Sign up for Motion Retreat right now. Like, go home, sign up for Motion Retreat right now. As of this moment, there's over a hundred of you signed up for Motion Retreat. I'm looking to take 200. So find another high schooler, find a friend who needs this community, who needs to hear the Word of God. Pastor Nate and I from Scott's Edition, we're working on an incredible series, an incredible message for the whole weekend. I just, I want to tell you about it, but I can't yet. You got to be there. Invite someone. Come to Motion Retreat March, tw March 10th through the 12th. And hey, if money's a problem, come talk to me. Shoot me a message on Instagram to my personal or to the Instagram for Chapel Students. Listen, there were times when I was growing up, I couldn't go on a retreat that cost, listen, $10. I couldn't do that. And I had to get help. But I wasn't afraid to ask for the help because I wanted to go on the trip. And we're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to make you feel weird. If you want to go on that retreat, but money's an issue, just let me know. It's so important for you. I believe what God's going to do that weekend could change your whole life. Don't just not go because of money. And then finally, March 8th, the week of the retreat, we got motion night. March motion night's going to be awesome. We're working on the details. I think we're going to be talking about relationships and dating and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to definitely not want to miss that. It's going to be incredible. We'll see you. We got a lot of stuff coming up. First Wednesday, motion night, motion retreat. Come to all of it. I cannot wait to see you there. Have a great night and I'll see you real soon.